Dr. Deflo. Hello, my name is Dr. D. Flo, and welcome to the second part of the box build. In this video, we will actually be working with electricity, so I'm going to quickly throw up a disclaimer. Caution, electrical hazard. Here's the game plan. We need the lithium battery to power the Arduino with five volts. However, when the Arduino is receiving external power from the USB type B, we need to take 5 volts from the Arduino to charge the battery. I am using a 3.7 volt, 6.6 .6 amp hour battery. I went with such a large battery because I wanted the system to last as long as possible while powering the 17 LEDs, the Arduino Mega, and the Bluetooth module, which is not low energy. Adafruit supplies an all-in-one PCB that has a 3.7 volt to 5 volt DC-DC converter and a battery charger circuit, which is perfect for our project. Adafruit has dubbed this technology the PowerBoost 1000. Admittedly, this is my first time using the PowerBoost, so I'm sure that there are better ways to accomplish what I am doing, but in the end, my method does work. Let me know in the comments if you have any recommendations. Next, let's talk about the PowerBoost pinout. The first pin is the input 5 volts from the USB connection. This pin is only for supplying power to charge the battery. The next pin is the BAT pin, which supplies power from the battery. This voltage will depend on how charged the battery is, ranging from 3 to 4.2 volts. We need 5 volts, so this pin will not be used in the project. Next is the load shared output pin or the VS pin. If the board is charging, then the VS pin will be at 5 volts from the USB. If the board is not charging, then it will be at the voltage of the battery. In my opinion, this pin would be a lot more useful if it was load shared between the USB and the boosted 5 volts from the battery. This way, the pin would always be at 5 volts. In its current configuration, it's not. Because of this, we will not be using this pin. The EN or enable pin is what allows us to turn the power supply on and off and consequently the box. When this pin is not connected to ground, the power supply is on. And when this button is connected to ground, the power supply is off. I used a rocker switch to manage this. Unfortunately, this means when the button is on, the EN pin is connected to ground. So the power supply is off. I'm okay with this for now, but it might drive you a little insane. This would be a good time to use the latching switch, because if you have it in the normally closed position, then every time you press the button, it will disconnect the circuit, turning the power supply on. However, I want to reserve these buttons for other functions. The next pin is the ground. Finally, we have the 5 volt output pin. This is the pin that we will be using to supply power to the Arduino and the voltage used to signal to the Arduino when a button is pressed. We are going to connect this pin directly to the 5 volt pin of the Arduino. Why am I not using the voltage in pin on the Arduino? Well, the regulated VN pin is meant for 7 to 12 volts. Normally, a regulator steps this 7 to 12 volts down to 5 volts, and the output is this 5 volt pin. In general, regulators do not like voltages being applied to their output, which is what we are doing but our stabilized 5 volts from the power boost will do no harm. We also need to connect the ground from the power boost to the Arduino for a completed circuit. We have one external connection for the box, the USB Type-B, which is connected to the Arduino. Therefore, when the Arduino is receiving external power from this connection, it needs to charge the battery, which would mean that we need to connect the 5 volt Arduino pin to the 5 volt input of the power boost or the USB pin. Now we have a slight problem here. This five volts will also go through the five volt pin on the power boost, which is not good. You can get away with this when the EN pin is not grounded, so you can use the box and charge it at the same time. 
However, if the box is disabled from grounding the EN pin, then this 5 volts running the reverse direction can damage the power shield. So I use another one of my rocker switches to sever this connection between the Arduino and the power supply when the power supply is off. Without this button, you can't charge the power shield when the power supply is off. We also need to supply this boosted 5 volts and ground to the protoboard. This pin is also a boosted 5 volts and this pin is also a ground. I connected the boosted 5 volts to the lone pin on the left as we talked about before and the ground to the pin all the way on the right. I also added these two columns of male pins to the protoboard so that I could take a 12 volt and ground and split it into 8 connections for each LED of the 4 momentary and 4 latching switches that require 12 volts. It's perfectly fine to supply 5 volts to these LEDs, but not only were the LEDs very dim at 5 volts, they were also different brightnesses because different color LEDs require slightly different voltages. I used a DC-DC digital converter I bought off of Amazon to convert my 5 volts from the power boost to 12 volts. The link is on my website. This was actually easy to set up. You input 5 volts and ground through one terminal, adjust the little potentiometer to step up this volts, and you access your new voltage through the other terminal. Just note that as you increase the output voltage, you will be proportionally lowering output current. I settled on an output voltage of about 11 to leave a little cushion in case a voltage spike would occur. If you hold down the black button for three seconds, it will turn off the numerical display on the DC-DC converter, saving power. Next, we need to wire the converter to the protoboard to easily split the 111 volt wire into mini. We need to do some power calculations. You should do these before you buy everything. So my battery is capable of supplying 3.3 amps at peak current draw, but constant current draw recommendation is 1.3 amps. If you purchase a different LiPo battery, these specifications should be readily available. All right, so my four military, four rocker switches and arcade button have LEDs powered at five volts using 20 milliamps. This is equal to 180 milliamps. My four latching and four momentary switches powered at 11 volts using 20 milliamps equals 160 milliamps at 11 volts. But to generate this, we need 352 milliamps at 5 volts. The Arduino Mega will draw less than 100 milliamps at 5 volts. I didn't probe my Bluetooth module with my multimeter, but usually Bluetooth peak current consumption is about 30 milliamps at 5 volts. This means we are consuming 662 milliamps at 5 volts to power the box. Remember that the power boost also uses a DC-DC converter to step up the battery voltage, which ranges from 3 to 4.2 volts based on charge. If we assume the battery is practically dead and is only supplying 3 volts, this means we are drawing 1.1 amps from the battery. This is a very conservative measurement, so our power supply is good to go. It is important for you to do these calculations at home if you deviate from my design at all. Finally, the last button related task. We need to plug the output from the switches located on the protoboard into the Arduino. I create a custom cable using my Molex crimp tool and header set. At the time, I wasn't worried about which button is plugged into which digital pin. I was going to use process of elimination to figure it out when coding. A tethered box is a lame box, so we need to install a Bluetooth module. The easiest Bluetooth module to work with is the Bluefruit Easy Link because it appears as a serial or COM port when connected. I'm not going to go into great detail about the pinout of the Easy Link because that would be its own video, and Adafruit provides a lot of documentation on their website. But the one thing you need to know is that there are two data lines in serial communication RX or receiver and TX or transmitter. Here are the connections that we need to make Easy Link ground to Arduino ground. Easy link DSR to Arduino ground. Easy link VN to Arduino 5 volts. Easy link TX or transmitter to Arduino digital pin 19 or receiver 1. Easy link RX or receiver to Arduino digital pin 18 or transmitter 1. Please note that the Arduino Mega has multiple communication pins. Next we have the EasyLink DTR to one microfarad capacitor in series with the Arduino reset. This capacitor is polar, so the positive or longer leg of the capacitor is connected with the reset 
and the negative leg is connected to the DTR pin. This capacitor is needed for programming to be properly initiated, so don't forget it. You can program your Arduino over Bluetooth, however I found that this can be slow and sometimes unreliable, so I still like to upload my code via USB. And that is the hardware portion of the build. In the next video, we will pair the box with the computer and have my computer react to buttons pressed on the box. Let me know in the comments if this build was informative. Did I leave out information or did I go into too much detail? Any criticism is helpful. Thanks so much.